Joining me now is Larry Lindsay. He is president and CEO of the Lindsay Group and former director of the National Economic Council under President George W. Bush. Larry, it's great to see you again. And, and you actually like the idea that the U.S. would clamp down on investment flows into China, right? Why? Well, <clears throat> let's be specific here. Um, it's not China specifically, although they're the most egregious uh, uh, case. What I think is that the standards that are applied for listing an American company on the New York Stock Exchange or some other exchange should be applied to everyone who lists on the NYSE. Right now, there's a lot of Chinese companies who don't comply with financial transparency rules. Yeah. And it doesn't seem fair to me that they should you know, not follow the same rules as everybody else. This is also about vulnerability, yes. though. And I am curious who you perceive as being more vulnerable in this trade war right now. Let me read you a tweet from Hu Shi Jin. I'm sure you're familiar with him, the Global Times editor, who often serves as kind of a, a mouthpiece of the Chinese government. He says, Larry, the U.S. Right. economy is not as promising as the White House brags. With no huge untapped potential, no major science and tech innovation in recent years, its exuberance is built on a fragile balance of a financial game, but it still launched a trade war. More terrible consequences will come. You, I mean, is this how the Chinese perceive us to be in the weakened position right now? Well, of course, <laughs> they're in a weakened position too, Kelly. So I think I would view this as more of uh, the propaganda war than anything else. <laughs> um, with regard to money going into China, though, you know, why should uh, U.S. mutual fund dollars or pension fund dollars go into companies in Chinese markets, Shanghai or what have you, even Hong Kong, that do not comply with the same financial transparency rules that apply to American companies? This is a matter of, in my mind, consumer protection. And by the way, I would say the same thing is true of Russian companies and Iranian companies and, mm -hmm. and French companies, although they're generally in compliance. Why should we be handicapped as investors uh, and let these funds just, you know, invest anywhere uh, right. just because they're overseas? I think the laws and the rules should be to protect us all. I also wonder if you think this would be a better way. So I think you believe that the tariffs have done uh, damage to the economy and that the president should reconsider maybe continuing to go down this path. And are you proposing this investment uh, block as a different option that could still hurt the Chinese without hurting uh, our economy further? Well, I think it's um, because their situation is so egregious. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that Chinese, uh, the Chinese economy will be hurt by this. Uh, I do think that uh, we've sort of reached the end of the road with regard to cost-benefit analysis on the tariff side. And I think, in fact, a lot of uh, the tariffs that have been recently suggested on the last tranches aren't going to take effect. So, for example, the December uh, tariffs. And we'll see what happens with the October tariffs after the October uh, 14th meeting. So, you know, again, I even think the president has recognized that it's not cost effective uh, to push the tariff anymore. And if, you know, he wants to continue pressure on China, which I think he probably does, I think this would be a good path to pursue. Let me ask you, Larry, about the Federal Reserve's role in all of this now. Uh, a lot of debate after uh, uh, pieces earlier this year suggested that the Fed should not cut rates in response to economic weakness inflicted by the president in order to make him bear the consequences of those actions. Do you agree with that? Um, do you think, you know, I mean, in other words, is the Fed making it sort of playing a political role even without meaning to? And what happens if they continue to cut rates further? Is that help or harm in the long run the U.S. economy? Well, the Fed should decide what it wants to do based on all the information it has. And um, if I were, for example, Chairman Powell I would, and the president were to tweet, I'd say, you know, Mr. President, I value everything you say. I also value everything I'm told by the Senate Banking Committee and the House Banking Committee and CEOs and labor union leaders and all the data that comes in. We take in information from a lot of them, a lot of people. And that's what we're going to base our decision on. So, you know, the president is obviously part of the um, uh, information set, but uh, he's not the exclusive part. And I think Chairman Powell might uh, make that clear.
Right, but I wonder what you think was happening with the economy, Larry, after the data this week. You know, is it weakening substantially? Does it warrant rate cuts? Well, I'm a, um, I'm a believer that, uh, you know, the actual hard data is more important than the sentiment data. Mm -hmm. uh, as I remember, the uh, market manufacturing index uh, came out the same day as ISM and market head manufacturing up half a percent. Mm -hmm. And today we got advanced durables and advanced durables rose. I'm looking tomorrow very carefully at what's happening to things as far as employment goes in the manufacturing sector. You know, we, it's going to be a negative number because of the GM strike, I believe. But we'll see, um, you know, if adjusting for the GM strike, it's still a pretty good number. It suggests that the sentiment may be awful, but um, firms aren't acting that way. And I believe in watching what I do, not what I say. So more rate cuts or no, if you're the Fed? They've already done it twice this year. Well, as of the data right now, um, I do not think another rate cut uh, is needed at this time. I think it's important for them to monitor the situation carefully, but we do have um, uh, reasonably solid uh, inflation. We are moving gradually up to the 2%. If you look at the, uh, the second quarter's uh, productivity numbers, uh, the labor inflation part of that is already at 2%. We also got 2.6% productivity mm -hmm. and costs went up 4.6 for labor. But, you know, we're close to that 2% target. Um, we have a very, very low unemployment rate. Um, and I think we will tomorrow as well. I don't see extremes in either direction yeah. that should cause the Fed to change its policy. Okay. Larry, it's great to see you again. Thanks so much for your time. That, thanks, Kelly. It's great to be back. Larry Lindsay joining me today.